To speed up our development process, we are going to automatically seed data into our database, leveraging the power of Entity Framework and using Bogus library. So the first step for that will be to create a DB set in our data context class. So this is an object that will handle all the operations against our employees table and will be based on an employee model. So let's create a folder called models and inside this folder we'll create a class called employee and then we will set up a few properties. And we will have a couple of properties based on enumerations. We have the employee type and the position. So we need to create the enumerations for that. The first will be the employee type. And notice that I have a display attribute, which is useful when you want to customize the way the enum will be visualized. It was particularly useful since we had enumeration values with two words, such as part-time and full-time and the display attribute will allow us to separate these words. Then I'll bring in the position and don't forget that you can find all this code in our repository in the links below. Once that's done, we can go back to the data context and bring in the using statement for the employee type. Then we will override the onModelCreating method, which allows us to configure our model so in this model, we will write the code to save the data. So I'm using the model builder object, calling this entity method using the employee model, and then calling the has data method, passing a list of employees that will come from the get employees method. So we have to create this get employees method, which will return a list of employees. So in this method, I'm going to initialize a list of employees and a faker object that comes from the bogus library and the fake data that I want to create will be based in the English language but you can find a few different languages in the bogus library documentation then we're writing a simple for loop that will run 50 times and each time it will create a new employee and for each employee the ID will be the index of the loop the image will come from the faker library calling the avatar method as well as the name and the salary type and position will come from methods that we're going to create and each time this loop runs we need to add the created employee to the employee list and in the end, we need to return the employees. Then I'm creating the three methods to randomly generate each property. So I'm going to start with the get random employee type. I'm creating an object of the random class. Then I'm getting all the values of the employee type enum. And then I'm randomly returning one of those values. And I do that by passing a random number to this getValue method. And this random number is created calling the next method of the random object. And when I call this next method, I need to pass an integer that will be the limit of that random number. So if I want to generate a random number from, let's say, 0 to 100, I have to pass 100 to this next method. You can also pass two numbers if you want a random number ranging from between these two numbers. But this random number has to be one of the numbers of the enum. So the range for this next method will be the amount of values of the enum, which I can get with this length property of the types variable. And since this getValue method returns an integer, I have to cast it as an employee type since I want to return an employee type. I know it can be a little bit confusing, so if you didn't understand, go back, pause the video and examine it step by step so you understand what this method is doing. Then I'm going to copy and paste the code for the get random position method 
and it's identical to the get random employee type method but just changing so that it gets the position and then to get the random salary i'm creating a random number from 30,000 to 100,000. So this time I'm passing two numbers into the next method instead of just one as we did in the previous methods. And this should be enough to seed the data. If I run the app and go into Visual Studio and query my employees table, I can see all the data randomly generated with the help of Bogus Library. And if I choose one of these images and paste the URL into a browser, I can see the avatar for that employee. So now that we have all this data, let's create our employees table. So first we need to create a service that will retrieve that data from the database. So we're creating a folder called services and then a class called employee service. And in that same file, I'm going to create an employee service interface. And in this interface, I'm going to declare the get employees method, which will return a task of the get employees response. So I don't want to simply return a list of employees. I want to return a response that will contain that list and also a status code and status message. So for that, I'm going to create a couple of classes that will help us have uniform responses, which is a good practice when creating APIs or services dealing with data. So I created a folder called responses and then a class called base response, which will have a couple of properties. One will be the status code and one will be the message. Then I'm going to create a class called get employee response which will inherit this base response. But it will also contain the list of employees. And I'm using inheritance to leverage the power of object-oriented programming. I'm using this base response because it will have properties that are common to other responses that I want to have. So all responses in this app will inherit from this base response, which means that they will all have a status code and a message. And of course, the employee service needs to be based on the I employee service interface, and we need to implement that interface by creating that method. And once the method is created, I need to use dependency injection to bring in the IDB context factory that we registered in our program class. So I need to declare the field. And then initialize the field in the constructor. Then I can use my context factory in the get employees method. First, I'm creating a new get employees response object. Then I'm going to use a try catch block to make sure the application doesn't break if I have unexpected errors. And inside the try block, I'm going to use the factory to create a DB context. And the employees list in the response will be the employees coming from the database. The status code will be 200 and the message will be success. If there are any errors, the status code will be 500, which means server error, and the message will be an error along with the technical message coming from the error object. And in that case, the list of employees will be null. Then I need to return that response, but the compiler is complaining because I haven't put the async keyword in the methods signature. But of course, it only makes sense to make this asynchronous if I call to list async and not just to list. But now that we can retrieve that list, we need to create a page to display it. So on the pages folder, let's add a new Razor component, which will be called employees table. Then we will add a page directive, 
which we route to the root of the app, hence the forward slash. And in the code block of this component, we need to inject our employee service. Then we need to create another field and that will be a list of employees, which will hold the employees that we want to display. And then we're going to use one of the Blazor's components lifecycle methods, the onInitialize async, where we will collect the response from the employee service, calling the getEmployees method, and we will assign the employees field to the list of employees in this response variable, which comes from calling the getEmployees method in the employee service. So if that list is not null, we're going to show a list of employees. So initially, let's just try to display that data using HTML. So I'm going to fast forward this part. And before running the app, we need to register our employee service. And let's run it and check if we can see the data. There you go. We can see all the data from the database, including the image. Of course, it looks horrible, but we're going to work on some styling now. As we did when we created the form, we're going to paste some HTML and CSS code and the content of our table will be inside this cardboard div. But I want to leverage the power of Blazor components to make this code cleaner. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new Razor component called card. And I'll paste the HTML with the CSS to this card component instead. This component will have a parameter of the render fragment type and we're calling it child content. The render fragment is a special type in Blazor that allows us to pass data into the component as a parameter. So everything that's wrapped by the card tag will be displayed in that area where the child content is. And now that we have this card, we will create our table inside it. So we have a div with a bootstrap class for table. Then we have a table tag with a few classes as well and a table body. Then I'm pasting some code that I had prepared previously and it contains HTML with Bootstrap and other CSS classes. So I'm not going to explain how I styled this table. I'm not a front-end developer, so all I do is grab a template and then make small modifications. But talking about front-end techniques is out of the scope of this tutorial. But since I have a few custom CSS classes, I need to add this style tag and some CSS code. So I'm pasting these CSS classes into the style tag. And of course you can find all this code in the links below. And then we have a decent looking table. And if we go into the dev tools in Chrome, we can see that the contents of the card component and the employee table component are compiled into one piece of HTML, but the components in Blazor make it way more organized from the perspective of the development. And to finalize, let's add some code to enhance this table a little bit. First, I want to change the background color of the employee type cell. So I'm gonna do that using conditional styling, which is very easy in Blazor. First, I have to remove these parentheses. They shouldn't be here. They're not doing anything. And I'm adding the call to a method inside the double quotes that define what the class for this table cell is. So I have a get employee type style method. 
that will return a string that will be the name of a CSS class. And I'm passing the employee type as an argument for this method. So this method will return a different CSS class based on the employee type. So let's create this method. And this method will return the result of a switch statement. And I'm pasting the code and I'm using this new notation for switch statements, which is very clean. And I'm simply returning a different string based on the employee type. And of course, I need to add all of these classes to the style tag. And if we run the app again, the table looks way better with the style to the employee type cell. And to finalize, let's try to show the display name for the enum instead of the enum's value. So I'm going to create an extension method for the employee's type enum. This method will be inside an enum extensions class. And I create an extension method using the this keyword. And here I'm getting the type of the enum, getting the member that I want, which is the corresponding value and accessing that value using first, then calling the getCustomAttribute method along with the getName method to get the display name. And for this, I need to bring in the reflection namespace. Then we need to call that method in the employee table page. And we can test to see the result. And that's it. Now the employee type cell has a display name. Next, let's see how we can add new employees to our database.